Hi, I'm Karen Stever with Griffin's GGS Pro Group. Today I'm going to talk to you about mealybug control in greenhouse crops. And with mealy, I want to ask, is any plant really immune to them? Maybe not. They cause unsightly damage seen here. You can see the glisten of this honeydew on the diplodenia leaf there, and then the mess on the mealybugs. And they can really zap the energy out of a plant, as well as make it extremely unattractive. Mealybugs have a long life cycle, up to about 60 days. And the adult females lay a large number of eggs, usually under their bodies. I'll note that the long-tailed mealybug has live young. They don't lay eggs at all. Mealybugs can live for two to three weeks off of the plant. They'll crawl under the rim of the pot or on the, under the table supports and live there without feeding, which is one of the things that makes them hard to kill. The males do fly. They don't look anything like the females. So what you're seeing on, on the plant are females. They don't disperse freely across the greenhouse like thrips would because they don't fly except for those males. And one of the problematic things about mealybugs is the honeydew they produce, which grows sooty mildew and makes the plants extremely unattractive, as well as blocks the light for photosynthesis and also attracts ants into your greenhouse. When you see mealybugs on top of the foliage like this, it's often just the tip of the iceberg and their populations may be much heavier down in the stems of the plant. There are generally several life cycles present we see some little nymphs here, as well as adults, and egg sacs, that waxy coating. And there's quite a few little crawlers coming out of this egg mass here. They also attract ants, which come to feed on the honeydew produced by the mealybugs. Honeydew tends to produce sooty mold, as seen here covering this colancho with a pretty severe population of mealybugs on it. Control of mealybugs is hard due to where they feed, how they clump up, how they protect their eggs. And then there's that infamous waxy coating to try to penetrate when you're doing a spray. So oftentimes cutting the plants back just to reduce the amount of the inoculum is the best way to get control on a plant. That's not always possible, for example, on this infested mum. And also the damage that they can do actually feeding into the stems can be significant and weaken the plant. And then there's all the debris that will remain on the leaves for at least a short time after the mealybugs are killed. So cutting them back, good way to go, but heavily infested plants, we completely re recommend that heavily infested plants are bagged and dumped. Mealy bug control has never been really satisfactory uh, previously. Systemic drenches gave 50, maybe as much as 70% control. You would really see the population take a dive and then just to reappear in, an, in the same crop or in the next crop that was placed in that location. And foliar spray rotations were pretty much the same, pretty poor efficacy. But relatively recent research by Dr. Raymond Cloyd at Kansas State has given us a new method for the first time that really works. What he said is make three foliar applications one week apart using the same product. He showed that he had excellent results, 100% control using Altus, Aria, or Rycar. GGS Pro has added Pradia and TriStar to this list. We've had the same excellent results among our customers with those two products. Capsule surfactant is helpful with these sprays because it improves the coverage. It is not absolutely necessary, but you obviously have to get good coverage uh, when spraying for mealybugs. Here's a list of effective products then as we know them for mealybug control. The original products in um, Dr. Cloyd's research, Altus, Rycar, and Aria are shown here. Rycar's label limits you to two spray applications, and that's why I've 
highlighted it in red. GTS Pro Group and our customers have experimented and done the three spray program with TriStar and with Pradia and had excellent results. Our customers say 100% control. We also expect that Ventigra would work just as well in this program. And before we had the three spray program from Dr. Cloy, the combination of talus and horticultural oil was one of our best controls. We would mix that tank mix and spray it twice 14 days apart. You could actually fit an oil spray in between the two combination sprays and increase your efficacy just by increasing coverage and chances. For root mealybugs, we can drench Altus or Mainspring, and those both give excellent control of root mealies. For edible crop, organic crops or naturally grown crops, the microbial insecticides do work. I recommend that you pick one of these microbials, fungal-based insecticides, and combine it with an acidoractin insect growth regulator. Also, I recommend adding capsule. That will improve your coverage at the same as it does with chemical mixes. Reapply this tank mix weekly and can spray the microbial alone in between applications of your tank mix. So the microbials can be reapplied in as little as three days. Uh, Acidractin can be reapplied only every seven days. This will be effective in controlling your mealybugs. It may take a little bit longer or a few more applications than the chemical sprays. As always, I've included products here that I believe have really good to excellent efficacy for mealybugs, but there may be products other than these that are safe and effective. Whatever product you use, read and follow all the label instructions. The label do change periodically and usually without notice. You can find similar list of effective products for insect and mite pests in our GGS Pro technical reference guide available from any of your uh, Griffin sales reps. I hope I've given you something that you can use in protecting your crops when faced with mealybugs. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please drop us an email at ggsprotech at griffinmail.com or you can reach us live at the phone number shown here.